The Athletic reported the Dodgers have interest in Luis Robert Jr. and Garrett Crochet, both, of course, of the White Sox. Uh, the White Sox are expected, I think, to at least entertain the possibility of being sellers at the trade deadline. They're always kind of an interesting team of they should probably blow it up, but they don't fully blow it up and they end up kind of being stuck this year. Their record sort of speaks for itself. But Blake, let's look at this kind of player by player. Uh, we'll start with Luis Robert Jr. He's kind of an interesting situation because he played basically the first week of the season before going then on the injured list with a right hip flexor strain. Uh, he also has had some injury concerns in the past. The hip strain kept him out for multiple months. He wasn't back uh, from the IL until the beginning of June. So, he, you know, like I said, missed about two months. Uh, and it hasn't been great for him since returning. If this is an opportunity, is it's is trade trading for Luis Robert Jr. in your estimation more of you know if the Dodgers are able to kind of buy low, if you will, or do you believe in kind of him as the player career stats kind of potential as a whole? I believe more in the career stats. I think the Dodgers would definitely try and buy low and say like you don't want to be stuck with him, Chicago, and it just make your rebuild worse if you don't get good value for him now. I mean, they're going to use all the negotiating tactics they can, but. I think overall, Robert's still a fine player. Like He's had a down year, but he's playing on the White Sox. I'm sure there's probably a little hard to get motivated and go play there. And you don't have many teammates helping you out. Like It's just not a good situation to be in. I think he's probably like a great case for a fresh start, would help him out a ton and boost his production overall. So he's not like playing for a contract or anything either. He signed for the next three years, though. So, I'm, I'm sure he's having some motivational problems just going there with the White Sox actively trying to lose and putting out the worst roster they can every day. Like, that's tough to deal with for a player. So I'm not too concerned about it, and I think he would still be a really intriguing piece to add to the outfield, especially considering looking ahead, the Dodgers don't really have many quality options signed in their outfield long term. So he could plug in for the next few years while also filling a need now. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Do you think so? I've shared, I think, you know, I'm sure we've probably texted about it at some point in our group chat. And I know I shared uh, this thought with Jeff when I was on with him uh, Sunday night. I'm of the mind that I think the Dodgers will ultimately uh, address their lineup by getting a proverbial, like, bigger bat in the outfield. I think, you know, Les Lee's Robert has struggled this season, but I think something like that is more likely than maybe trying to get a Boba uh, I just don't know if the Dodgers will necessarily do that type thing. Do you see, do you think because of, like you just touched on there, the lack of options right now, set options in the outfield might push the Dodgers more towards Luis Robert Jr.? Or would you like to see them maybe take a chance on somebody like Tommy Pham, who I know you've uh, tweeted about? And I, I'm, I, I don't, it'll be interesting to see how popular of a, or unpopular of a name Pham is, is in the chat. I mean, I think Pham, like, He's a really solid, productive player. I think he'd bring a bit of a spark to the team that they don't have. I know a lot of people bring up his personality and all that, but my counterpoint to that is the Diamondbacks didn't care about his personality when they were going to the World Series, and Pham was producing out there every single day and one of their best hitters. So I think Pham is a great piece that you could probably add for pretty cheap to kind of solidify your group there. I would like to see them add a big bat, but... Like, that's not something Friedman's going to do unless the price lines up to something they think is fair. And it's really shaping up to be a seller's market here. There's maybe like three or four teams right now who we think are selling and pretty much everyone else is probably a buyer or at least not selling. So, like, that's going to bring up the cost on everyone, including the big name guys, to even higher costs. So I'm just not sure if Friedman's going to be willing to do that. But I do think it would be interesting if you got like a Bichette and a Tommy Pham instead of Pham and Robert or something. I think that's still a possibility. And honestly, Bichette might even be cheaper because he has less years of control than Robert and they're both kind of having down years. So maybe that is something you could work out there and maybe pass on Pham and get an outfielder from the Blue Jays that they have. I'm not sure who they have on the top of my head there, but I mean, there's some options there that you could kind of mix it around and make work. Are you saying you want the Dodgers to trade for George Springer from the Blue Jays? I mean, he's been, I think, one of the worst hitters in baseball this year. So maybe a little salary dump. Like, Dodgers eat that contract, take Bichette, and then release Springer. Okay. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Could maybe. work. I mean, yeah, maybe. Otani's uh, only making $2 million this year. You got some money. 
That's true. I think what's going to be, you know, to your point of a lot of teams, especially in the National League, are st- still alive uh, for postseason berths because of the expanded field and the wild card and all that. Right now, yes, it is, you know, a pretty crowded picture. Five weeks from now, who knows? Like, you know, if there are two or three more teams that end up going in the wrong direction, uh, maybe that ends up that balances out the market a little bit more. And I know Andrew Friedman, typically the Dodgers, and I think every executive really waits uh, until closer to the deadline than, you know, doing a major move right now, just because that's how business tends to unfold. And so I think this year, more than any other year, if the current trends and current records sort of hold, we're going to really see things drag out until July 30th, uh, which is a Tuesday, which is when the trade deadline is. Let's look at the other angle of this, you know, Dodgers sort of White Sox rumor. And the White, I think we should also note that the it was reported that the White Sox also sent have assigned some of their top scouts to look at the Dodgers, Mariners, and there's one other team that I'm blanking on. Padres, Padres uh, in person. So sort of, you know, maybe potentially gearing up for uh, possible trades down the line. The other option for that has been reported is Garrett Crochet. Uh, the Dodgers just saw him. Obviously, he pitched well. He's in, he's putting together a strong season. It's his first as a starting pitcher, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, before this year, all of Crochet's 72 career games had been out of the bullpen. I think we should also note he had Tommy John surgery in 2022. And, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a running joke, but if you're a pitcher and you've ever had Tommy John surgery, then the Dodgers are pretty much always interested in acquiring you. Uh, Blake, so with Crochet, new role, kind of a, a late bloomer in his career, if you will. Is this is this season kind of fool's gold or maybe the start of a nice trajectory for him? I think this is closer to what he actually is. When he was drafted, he was a top pitching prospect in the league, and they called him up at a pretty young age and just stuck him in their bullpen because they thought he would benefit from pitching in the major leagues more than pitching in the minor leagues. And now he came back from his injury and they put him back into a starting role, which is kind of where he's always been suited for. And He's really thriving. I think he added a cutter this year, if I'm not mistaken, or he added some kind of new pitch. Someone can double check me on which one it was, and it's benefited him a lot. So I do think this is closer to who he is, whether he's going to keep up this elite, one of the best pitcher in baseball levels. You can question that just because it's so hard to actually pitch at this level and stay this good for that long. Of course, he has the innings limit. That's going to be somewhat of a concern for any team that's trading for him, but Crochet is an elite talent, and any team would love to have him in their mix. Yeah, so before we finish uh, this topic, I do want to say Blake and I are going to answer questions here shortly. So just a reminder, we want to make sure we have enough time for everybody. So just start it with question in all caps. It makes it a little bit easier for us to kind of pick out as we're scrolling through. Uh, so can, you know, let's put some finishing touches on this Dodgers and White Sox. Remember, on one hand, for me, uh, I know the Dodgers tend, especially under Andrew Friedman, he likes to use the the phrase and even Brandon Gomes of being opti- opportu- opportunistic. Excuse me, I don't know why I couldn't get that out uh, with whether tr- with whether that's trades or signings. And so, on one hand, I do feel you know maybe something like this of potentially getting a starting pitcher with a high uh, ceiling. Did I describe that correctly? For the is that how uh, what the computer nerds say? High ceiling, yeah. I think okay. you can go with there that one. Go. Elite right. stuff. There we go. Elite Good stuff. Spin, spin rate. Uh, you know, it it makes sense, but also it, it surprises me a little bit. But then it, it some of our back to our conversation earlier tonight of being somewhat concerned about the outlook of their starting pitching, because I do feel like and it is a big if. And I have I have often pointed out that the, the if is a significant one, like if they get healthy, you know, Yamamoto and Glass now, like, do you necessarily need like a, a top end ace to sort of put behind them i don't necessarily think so but if yamamoto doesn't come back or if he's not anywhere near the level that he was certainly the starting rotation looks a lot more shaky for october yeah i mean i think the benefit of adding him even if they do bring back if yamamoto comes back and glass is healthy like adding a third elite start to that mix is like kind of crazy to think about you run out three aces out there in a postseason series and that's going to be really tough to beat and the Dodgers also have a ton of pitching prospects that not all of them are going to be able to make the team and make the roster. So at some point, you're going to have to move some of these players before they maybe fizzle out like or lose trade value. Or So I think there is a route the Dodgers could take where they say, let's build on the strength that we already have and make our pitching staff that much better, especially if prices for other players are 
out of control or something they don't really feel comfortable meeting or maybe they want to go the cheaper route and get like a Mark Canna to help their outfield and then add an elite starting pitcher to the mix just to give you more depth there. It kind of protects you if someone does get hurt. And if someone doesn't get hurt, you just have another elite option for your pitching staff. So I wouldn't totally rule it out if Yamamoto is coming back and Glass now still healthy and Miller figures it out. But it wouldn't be like a pressing need where they need to go make a deal. They're kind of in a good spot where they have a ton of options where they could do so many different things. Like they could go get a shortstop or they could go fix the outfield or they could add to their bullpen or starting rotation. And you can make an argument that they don't need to go do any of that stuff, but they could also benefit from any of it. And that's pretty much a good place to be. Yeah, that's a good point. We have five weeks, like I said, pretty much between now and the trade deadline. And this isn't uh, certainly isn't going to be the only discussion of a potential trade that we have. And so I'm uh, looking forward to kind of seeing what direction the Dodgers end up going in. So.